So we're continuing on with uh, <clears throat> puja, a smart ritual, and uh, let's have a look at where we got up to objects of puja, I believe. Objects of puja, correct. So most common objects of puja, as understood in a broad sense, are idols. Murti, Pratima, Archa, meaning the figures or the icons that are used for three-dimensional like that are used for worship, which can which will be dealt with later. But the idol is only one of many places of puja, puja stana, puja pada, uh, that is, objects suitable to receive worship or honor, which are mentioned by the texts. Thus, the PP quotes many sources, lists the following objects. So quoting uh, the Parishishta of uh, I guess Apastamba Griya Sutra, right? Water, fire, sun, standila, which is like an altar or a, pre a prepared place for a fire sacrifice, an open ground prepared for sacrifice, and quoting from um, Shatapata, so maybe the Shatapata Brahmana, uh, earth, sky, food, gold, Brahmins, cows. These are all places of worship where worship can be done. So uh, in the in the footnotes it says here Mitra Mishra notes that notes that earth water and sky are thought of as receptacles for the deity while food gold brahmins and cows are not as this militates against the practice of honorable men these objects are mentioned as receptacles only for their glorification okay all right so let's go up to the top here so we have also um, Brahma Purana mentioning Kumbha, a vessel or a pot, the space on, on, uh, on, on, on a lotus, Kamalo Padi, uh, on top of a lotus, teacher and parents. These are all places uh, uh, we have also from uh, Bhagavad Purana, 11.11.42, uh, 11, Vaishnavas, the wind, the heart, uh, all beings. Also from Bhagavad Purana 11.355, unexpected guests known as Atiti. Uh, from the Kalika Purana 60.32, stones like Dwaraka Shilas and uh, Shalagrama Shilas. Un uh, un uniconic forms like the, the lingam, the phallic ling lingam. Used, um, actually, you can, use a, you can have a lingam for any deity, but... Specifically these days, more for uh, what the worship of Shiva or Rudra. Uh, attributes like a book, weapons, like trident or sword for Durga, or also a yantra, which is a uh, mystical design for a particular deity, which is two-dimensional and includes some usually intersecting triangles and lotuses and different things like that inside of a square boundary. Uh, <clears throat> Agni Vesha, uh, Griya Sutra, 2.4.10, mentions further mandala. A mandala is more like a representation of the universe on which different deities are invoked. So the Kularna of a Tantra, 6.72, also a winnowing fan or shur shurpa. A winnowing fan is a, it's a, it's a basket that you use for um, shaking, shaking, husking, de-husking grain, uh, especially rice. Uh, a wall, cloth, a sheet, a sheet of cloth, a cloth board on which a drawing is found, a one's head or heart. These objects of puja occur again and again in various texts. The Pancharatra system knows four places of worship simultaneously offered. This is called Chaturasta, Chatur, Chatustana Archana, yeah, or it's also called Chaturastana Puja. Um, vessel means the pot, the kumbha, the mandala. In the case of Pancharatra, this is usually the Chakrabja Mandala, the Bimba or the deity, the Murti, the idol, and the fire, the Homa. Uh, okay, so this is an this is a quotation from Ishvara Samhita thirteen one hundred one. So um, different kinds of offerings are enjoined for these objects, 
according to their nature. Thus, water for washing the feet, padia, which is offered to a, an idol, cannot be offered to fire, uh, as it would be extinguished thereby. Uh, the sun is worshipped by recitation of hymns from the three Vedas, and the, the fire by offering oblations, usually of ghee or grains, um, <clears throat> Brahmins by offering hospitality, cows by giving fodder, fellow Vaishnavas by brotherly affection, the heart and the sky by contemplation, wind by regarding it as prana. Prana is, an, is used, prana means the vital breath, um, but it can also uh, refer, to, it, it, the word is in the Upanishads is, is a synonym for Brahman, the Supreme Spirit. So water by offering water mixed with other offerings. Um, so for instance, by Tarpana, by offering water as Tarpana for, for the forefathers or for different deities. The Standila means the, the, the altar by mantras. The deity within one's own body is worshipped with comforts or boga. Imagine to be offered to the Lord, all beings, uh, by, all beings by regarding all as equal. So the worship of all sentient beings by being equipoised and and accepting everybody as equal. All right. So uh, the objects listed so far are still worshipped and honoured on certain occasions. A few examples from contemporarily performed rituals and classical texts are provided. Worship of water is known, for example, from the puja of the river Ganga or Ganges on the day of Dashara, which is the, the tenth day after the nine days of Navaratri, the nine nights of, uh, of the Durga Lakshmi Saraswati puja, which comes in October, November. So fire worship is well known from sacrificial ceremonies. A puja of the fire is performed on Holika Day, which is the Panguni a Palguni um, uh, Purnima, Holika Day, uh, the day when uh, when they when in North India they they celebrate Holi or the uh, also the the there was a uh, demoness called Holika who got burned up uh, when when she tried to kill Prahlad, but Prahlad he uh, survived that. The sun is worshipped by repetition of mantras in the Sandhya rites. So we have the Vedic and Tantric Sandhya rites, which address mantras to the sun. And so uh, and it is one of the deities of the Panchayatana. That's, that means Surya. Surya is the sun is considered or sun or Surya Narayana. Uh, one of the Panchayata deities, which is there's a, a system by the Smartas to worship five main forms that they consider to be main forms of Brahman or the Supreme Spirit. And the main deity of several vratas, so the sun, yeah. So Surya Namaskar is also a vrata. There's other vratas that have to do with the sun. The Standila is the offering place of Vedic sacrifices in which worship is paid first. Worship of the earth, Bhumi Puja, occurs, uh, for example, before the construction of a new building. Puja of the sky is mentioned in PP, pages, pages 284 and 282. I don't know, 212, I guess. Um, I am not aware of any contemporarily performed puja offered to the sky. Food becomes an object of worship at the Govar Govardhana Puja, Anakuta, where they make uh, the worship of the natural Govardhan, Govardhana hill uh, in Vrindavan and, or a mountain of cow dung or a mountain of food offerings in which the idol of Krishna in his child form, Bala Krishna, is placed. Gold coins are worshipped as representing the goddess Lakshmi in the Lakshmi Puja during Deepavali. Brahmins are frequently worshipped at the end of occasional pujas, that is the Naimitika pujas that we talked about before. Naimitika and Nitya, Nitya are done every day, Naimitika occasionally. The sacredness of the cow is well known and need not be discussed further. A cow with a calf is worshipped on Govatsa Dvadasi, <clears throat> the 12th day of the moon, and uh, Govatsa means, Vatsa uh, refers to a calf and, and Go is a, is a cow. Uh, in Mar in um, Marathi, that's called Vasu Vasu Bharash, Bharas. So Bara means 12. So Vasu Bara. Um, 
Mitra Mishra in PP page 9 and 14 remarks that a vessel, Kumbha or Kalasha, is used in the Durga worship, particularly in festivals, all gods can be invoked in it. So it's it's a, if you don't have a particular deity for a particular uh, devata or god, then you just use you can use a, a water pot with a coconut and some leaves on top and uh, invoke any deity that you like. The vessel, which is imagined to be the seat of the universe, is of great importance in many pujas. It is never kept empty, but is filled, purna kalasha, purna means full, kalasha means pot, uh, with auspicious objects while Vedic mantras are recited. In the punyavachanam ceremony, punyavachanam, punya means auspicious, aha means day, vachana means to declare or to say. So to declare a holy day, to make holy water in a vessel, is called punyavachanam. Um, that there are several other rituals for making holy water, like simple Kalasha Puja, or very, very more elaborate than Punyavachanam is the Udakashanti ritual. A ritual performed to secure an auspicious day, the following mantras are employed in connection with the vessel. With Rig, uh, with Rig Veda 9.17, for A Kalesh, Kal, Kalashesh Shu Dhavati, the, the vessel, is established on a heap of grains patty or or just simple rice grains and with uh rigveda 1075.5 imambe gange yamune saraswati it is filled with water to which one adds according to rigveda kila section 5 1887 9 gandadvaram durad darsham uh, this is from sri suktam uh sandalwood paste or ganda and then with Taitira Samhita 4292, Kandat, Kandat, Prarohanti, Blades of Durva Grass, with Rig Veda 1097.5, Ashvate Vo Nishadhanam, twigs of five different trees or five twigs of the mango tree. Um, I would say that's not uh, the translation here. Five twigs is actually five leaves connected connected by by twigs usually it's connect they're connected it's called pancha pallava uh with the uh, rig veda 10 um 15 ya palinir ya apala areka nuts actually this mantra can be used for any fruits um rig veda 5 um 82 3 sahi ratnani dashuse jewels or ratna which are usually substituted by an un, by an offering of unbroken grains or akshata, so inside the pot. Uh, Rig Veda 235.10, Hiranyarupa sa Hiranyasamdrik, gold, is gold, which is usually in the form of a gold coin. Rig Veda 382, th sorry, 384, Yuva Suvasaha, uh, Parivita, uh, a garment is put around the vessel, right? The kalasha is then covered with the leaves uh, of of the twigs of the mango tree or of the branches of several sacred trees which have been inserted into the vessel before. With Taitiya Samhita 1841b, Purna Darvi Parapata, a, a shallow dish filled with rice or other grains, Purna Patra, is set on the vessel. On this dish full of grains, a symbol, an auspicious symbol like a swastika uh, or a lotus may be drawn with kumkumum, um, on which the main deity invoked in an, in an idol or a murti uh, or an areka nut is placed. Uh, on other occasions, the vessel is topped with a coconut to be, and is worshipped as Varuna, the deity of water. The Purna Kalasha is a symbol of plenty and welfare. It is believed to fulfill the desires of, of its owners and produce um, various treasures. The drawing of a lotus, often with eight petals, Astadala Padma, uh, being a symbol of the cosmos, uh, occurs especially in Chantric texts as a mandala in which divinities are invoked. The honoring of teachers is very common in India and especially practiced on the day of Vyasa Purnima. Likewise, parents are to be honored, to be treated and served with respect. The fellow Vaishnava is honored by 
bowing to his feet uh, by those Vaishnavas belonging to the Vakari tradition in Maharashtra. The wind, Marut, one of the five elements, is known as a deity of Vedic times. In tantric forms of worship, deities are worshipped and meditated upon as residing in the devotee's heart, spoken of as the lotus of the heart, as beings, uh, as beings, as all beings, as objects of worship are mentioned in Bhagavad Purana 329.22. The unexpected guests should be honored with hospitality according to the rules laid down in the Dharma Shastras. Stones such as the Shalagram are commonly worshipped as deities. See page 50. The um, Linga is the most common and iconic form used in Shiva worship. Attributes like books and weapons sometimes become objects of puja, that is, the worship of books on the day of Saraswati puja, the worship of Durga's trident, uh, or, and that of tools and instruments during the Devin, Devinavaratra. Yantras being diagrams mostly with mantras inscribed and mandalas are, are, are well-known uh, objects of tantric worship. The winnowing fan occurs frequently as a receptacle of items signifying the good fortune of a woman whose husband is living. Women, uh, two uh, objects like a wall, a, a sheet of cloth or a cloth board, worship is due when pictures of deities are painted on them. The top of the head, Sahasrara, Sahasrara Chakra, instead of the heart, is a place where the deity is meditated upon in tantric puja. <clears throat> Other objects of worship not mentioned so far are human beings like unmar young unmarried girls in the Kumari puja and young boys after the Rupanayanam in the Patuka puja. Uh, further, further animals like snakes being worshipped on Nagapanchami, uh, plants like the holy basil, Tulsi tree, especially on the Tulsi Vivaha days, trees like the Banyan or Vata, um, and tree, uh, which is worshipped by those who observe the Vata Savitri Vrata and the wooden sandals, Paduka, of gods and saints. Very commonly, Areka nuts represent deities, especially Ganapati, when worshipped at the beginning of a ceremony and when Many deities are placed in a mandala. A coconut may have a similar function. These different places of worship are said to be worshipped by different kinds of devotees according to their mental capacity. The god is in fire for those who perform rit ritual uh, ceremonials. The god is in heaven, the sky, for those who, who are thoughtful and offer prayers in, in deities or idols, for the weak-minded and for yogins, Hari is in the heart. And this is a quotation from Rigvidana 329.3, 3, translated by Gonda. Interesting. Um, in Bhagavad Purana 11.27.12, idols or murtis are said to be made of the following materials uh, and kinds. One made of stone, two of wood, three of metal, four of clay, five painted, six of sand, seven mental, eight of jewels. So uh, in PP, ele uh, pages 11, 21 to 23, quoting Skanda Purana, mentions nine kinds, idols made of one jewels, two gold, three silver, four copper, five brass, six metal, seven stone, eight wood, and nine clay. An idol prepared from jewels is considered to be the best, while one made of clay is the most inferior. Um, different fruits like wealth or offspring are ascribed to the worship of idols prepared of different materials. Idols are distinguished as movable ones or chala, uh, that is those which can be lifted up and carried from to another place, and immovable or achala or stira, those which are fixed to a pedestal and cannot be moved once they have been installed. For immovable ones, there is neither invocation, avahana, nor dismissal, visarjana, of the deity, uh, as in the case of most movable ones, like the ones made of clay. Clay or painted idols are wiped, but not bathed, as they would easily dissolve. 
Well, the puja in temples, big idols of stone, wood, and or brass are used. Their shape and manufacturing, which follows all old traditions, cannot be dealt with here. At home, they worship small brass, uh, silver, or copper idols in the daily puja, pictures uh, or drawings in some occasional pujas. For other occasional pujas, like the Ganesha puja on the Shukla Chaturthi, the fourth day of the bright fortnight of the month of Bhadrapad, the Maharashtrians use idols, Utsava Vigraha or Murti, made of clay. Uh, traditionally, these are prepared by hand and painted. See the illustration one. The, um, the uh, same forms and dimensions are observed every year. This custom is, however, disappearing in the big cities where molded deities are now on the, on the market, in the market, uh, see illustration two, the, in, the institution of the Panchayatara Puja, which is said to have been popularized by Shankara, meaning Adi Shankaracharya, deserves special attention. It is recommended in almost all modern treaties on Puja, but these days it is not so commonly found in Maharashtra. And when it is mainly mainly among the uh, Konkanasta Sitpavan Brahmins, uh, I guess Konkan Brahmins coming from Karnataka, one of the groups originating from the country west of the Sayadri range, Konkana, north and, and south of Bombay. The idea is to unite the principal deities of five sects, that is, Shaivas, Vaishnavas, sun worshippers, Sora, Shaktas, and the worshippers of Ganapati, Ganapatya. This type of worship existed long before the medieval period, as is shown by the existence of a Panchayata shrine in Devgar or Deoga uh, of the 6th century. From the existence of, yeah, okay, 6th century and from epigraphic evidence. Epigraphic evidence. So uh, the symbolism of the number five uh, was certainly involved when this mode of worship, worship came into being. The five deities are either worshipped in in form of a small uh, in form of a small small brass idols, or uh, in iconic and iconic forms: a barna linga, Shiva, a shalagram stone for Vishnu, a Surya Kanta gem or crystal for Surya a metallic stone for Devi, a red stone from the river Narmada for Ganapati. The arrangement is described by the following verse ascribed to Bopadev. So I'm not going to chant the Sanskrit. Shambhu, being in, being in the center, one should arrange from Shankara's northeastern direction, Hari, Vishnu, Ina, Surya, Haribu Ganesha, Hadabu Ganesha, Devi. Hari being in the center, one should arrange Shankara, uh, Ibasha Ganesha, Ina, uh, Agasuta, Devi. Ravi or Surya being in, in the center, one should arrange Hara, Shiva, Ganesha, Aja, Vishnu, Ambika, Devi. Devi being in the center, one should arrange Vishnu, Hara, Ekadanta, meaning Ganesha, and Ravi. Lambodra, uh, Ganesh being in the center, one should arrange Aja, uh, Ishvara, Shiva, Ina, Arya, Devi. So uh, who bestow uh, ample prosperity when arranged accordingly, but when disarranged cause damage. So the, so the Panchayata Puja, there's five personalities that are being worshipped. And you have to situate the main one, your main, the main deity that you're worshiping most, that's your Istadevata, that's your main deity, you put in the center. And then according to the one you put in the center, you have to put in the proper directions, in the corners, the other four. So here's a, here's a little chart with uh, Shiva Panchayatana, Vishnu Panchayatana, Surya Panchayatana, Devi Panchayatana, and Ganesh Panchayatana, in which case they're all, all of these five are... Um, are given in the five squares and the sixth square which is the top left square here shows the directions east southeast south southwest west west northwest north and northeast like that and then the center of course is the center okay so then um uh we can go to the next page 
The same order is recommended by several texts like Ram Archana Chandrika, page 22 one, uh, or 1 to 17. Uh, DHS, I'm not sure what that that is, 631, 14 to 19. And Gyanamala quoted in uh, Achara Mayuka, Achara Mayuka, page 59, 13 to 24. The shrines of some temples are arranged accordingly. So there are some Panchayatana temples and they arrange them the same way. The practice, in practice, two interpretations of the verse are found. According to the first one, illustration three, the idols are arranged from the northeast direction as seen from the point, from the viewpoint of the devotee who faces east while they face west. In this case, the order is as shown above. According to the second interpretation, which is less common, the deities face east and the devotee turned to the west faces the deities. This leads to the following order for Shiva Panchayatana as seen from the viewpoint of the devotee. Illustration three. So here, so for example, over here, let's look at the Shiva Panchayatana. We have starting in the top left, uh, Shiva in the middle, then at the top left, uh, Vishnu Surya, uh, going around clockwise, Vishnu Surya, Ganesh, and, and Devi. Over here, and the, another one would uh, would be Shiva in the beginning, and then starting from the top left, Ganesh, Devi, Vishnu, and Surya. So that's a completely different order. The different order of Surya and Ganapati in the Vishnu Panchayatana is recommended by verses from the Gautami Gautami. Tantra, I think it means Gautamiya Tantra, uh, quoted in PP, page 239, 22 to 25. So here we also have Vishnu in the center with Shiva, Surya, Ganapati, and Devi around. So Mantra Mahodadi, which is a, a, a work on Mantra Shastra, which is quite popular, uh, chapter 21, 22, 39 to 41, slokas, changes the position of Surya and Devi in the Ganesh, uh, panchayatana. Okay. So there's also other forms of Panchayatana um, where the main deity is worshipped together with four closely related figures belonging to the same cult, like Rama Panchayatana, where Rama is in the middle, Sita and Satrugna on the left, and Lakshmana Bhat, uh, Bharata on the right side. The idols are housed in temples, in small shrines, on the roadside, in separate in a separate room of the house or in a corner of the kitchen. At home, they are usually placed in a wall shrine like cupboard um, or a construction of silver. Brass, wood, etc., or varying size uh, in, Mar uh, in, in Marathi Devhara. Uh, see illustration four, imitating the structure of a Hindu temple in, in, on a small scale. In Maharashtra, commonly worshipped deities are those of Ganapati or Krishna in child form, Balakrishna, and the goddess Annapurna. The followers of the Madhva Vaishnava tradition keep their idols closely in special boxes, which are often covered with the skin of a, the black antelope, Krishnarjuna. Krishnarjuna. Uh, when taken out for the daily worship, they are arranged hierarchically on several steps, of which Vishnu occupies the highest one, Ganapati, one of the lower ones. Every man, every man-made idol is infused with life in a ceremony called Prana Pratishta, without which the, the idol or deity is considered nothing but a lifeless object unfit to receive worship. By Prana Pratishta, the, the deity... Um, becomes identical with the devata as long as its prana is not taken out. Damaged and broken deities, however, cannot be used in worship any longer as they are supposed to be inhabited by evil spirits. The removal is made in case a linger is burst or burnt by lightning or fire, broken or split by madmen, th uh, enemies, thieves, an elephant, or carried away by flood or worn out uh, on its pedestal, etc., in the course of time. Just as the soul leaves the old body and goes to another one, likewise, the deities abandon the old lingams, etc., and having seen the an old lingam, etc., the Bhutas, Pratas, Pisachas, and Brahma Rakshasas enter it because it is not inhabited by a being. They create a terrible harm, famine, death, etc., causing the ruin of the constructor of the lingam, etc., of kings, 
people as well as of the vill a village. Therefore, one should, with all efforts, perform the act of removal. In, su in some cases, the idol uh, or deity can be repaired and the demons inhabiting it can be expelled. We should hit the we should hit the Bhutas, which have entered the lingam, uh, with the Astra mantra, which is mentioned down there in one thirty one footnote one thirty one as, put. Uh, usually it's Maastraya put or Astraya put, or Omastraya put, uh, but here it's just put, and whatever Bhutas have entered the lingam and stay in it should go to their desired place having abandoned this linga by Shiva's command. The Vedi will be presided over by the Vid Vidyeshwaras and Shiva will be present in the lingam. So in uh, by the right of Pranapatista, the, the, the deity becomes a deity itself. If the, if the deity is considered a mere aid of worship or a symbol, there would be no harm in worshipping a damaged deity. The PR, page 123, 11 to 12, states that a person considering the deity of Vishnu as merely an ordinary object made of iron goes to hell. SC, uh, SCV Bhattacharya, a traditional representative of Shaktism, strongly refutes the opinion of those who argue that the worship of, of the deity with form or image worship uh, is only a means of producing steadiness. So we have some long footnotes here. Uh, for example, this Siddhanta Shekara, uh, 3167-68, for the last verse, compare the verse on page 120. May those Buddhas go away who stay on earth. Those Buddhas who are creating obstacles, may, may those go by Shiva's command. Okay? So this verse is... Uh, Apakatantu ye buta, te buta, buvisamsita, ye buta, vignakataras, te gechantu, shivagyaya. Right? And some other people say, uh, agyaya hare, which means by Vishnu's, by Vishnu's command they go. Some, usually Vaishnavas will say it that way. So some followers of neo Hinduism, uh, answering the Muslim and Christian criticism of idol worship, argue that the idol is considered nothing but a symbol of the absolute, absolute and its worship can therefore. Uh, not be called idolatry. These uh, ideas have partly been taken up by Western writers. Um, <clears throat> Farqua um, summarizes these arguments and modern Hindus' defense of idol worship. Moreover, he deals with those groups within Hinduism which do not accept idol worship. Hacker, 1978, pages 584, 586 has shown that that according to the traditional Hindu Dharma, the idol is is regarded as identical with the deity after the Prana Pratishta, and that among that only in the atmosphere of radical monism of Advaita Vedanta, the image becomes something like a symbol. Um, so then we have further on the traditionalist view mentioned there. State stating that the idol is identical with the deity is that of Podar, 1951, pages 55, 45, whom Hacker also quotes in his review of Daniel Danilo's Hindu polytheism, 1969. For the question of idolatry, see uh, also Stevenson, 1920, page 416, and Fallon, 1968, for a discussion of idol worship, idolatry, and the use of symbols in Catholicism. Um, note also that different results are ascribed to the worship of idols made of different materials and that at home the same idols are worshipped, which are also taken along on journeys. Uh, so we have a discussion here of, uh, I think, different different um, images made in different of different uh, materials. According to the concept of Achyavatara for the purpose of ordinary worship, even among inanimate objects, an image of Krishna becomes an avatar of Vishnu, endowed with a certain miraculous power felt by the worshipper. As soon as it is duly consecrated, according to the Pancharatra rites, it being supposed that Vishnu, owing to his omnipotence, uh, is capable of descending into such images with a portion of his shakti or power. That's Shreda, 1960, 1973. All right, so let's continue on. 
we have um, uh, that the last the last sentence is that uh, S S S C V S C V but it char oh, so. Uh, did we read this? By the right of prana pratista, the, the idol becomes a deity itself if the deity is considered a mere. Yeah, we read this. Okay. So SCV Bhattacharya, traditional representative of Shaktism, strongly refutes the opinion of those who argue that the worship of the deity with form or image worship is only a means of producing steadiness of mind. So as it would follow that the performance of these rituals were lost labor, there are a class of people who think that forms are nothing and being purely imaginary disappear when the real formless one appears and are merely useful to prepare the way for this. Whereas the forms are the real bodies of the devata, just as the physical body is the sheath of the atma or the soul. The, it could also mean paramatma. The devata does really appear in these forms. During the period extending from the invocation of life until its final disposal, the earthen image is in the eyes of the sadhaka, sadhaka consciousness itself. Only those forms are to be worshipped which the deity has assumed to show itself to the devotee and not products of the devotee's own imagination, the worship of which is not approved of by the text. In tantric forms of worship, the mental idol which according to Bhagavad Purana 11.27.12 is all, along with the uh, idols of stone, wood, etc., said to be one kind of idol, is to be worshipped first. As in, it is impossible to hold the deity's form constantly present in one's heart. The same form of the deity is worshipped outwardly in the deity, in the idol. As the formless cannot be grasped easily by the worshipper's mind, it has to be adorned uh, in the full in the form of the different objects uh, like idols where the deity manifests itself clearly. Idol worship should not be given up until the devotee has reached a very high stage of realization. An analogy to rites like bathing, shnana, or giving gifts, dana, puja is traditionally divided into three kinds. One, um, this is the time for puja. So daily and regular nitya puja, two, occasional naimitika puja, and three, optional kamya puja for a particular desire. According to the strict rule, the daily puja has to be performed thrice a day in the morning, noon, and evening. These timings imitate those of sandhya, which is also done three times a day, which on their part have been borrowed from the Agnihotra rite. The morning puja follows the tarpana, at the, <clears throat> the latter part of the morning, and according to some authorities, precedes the Vaishvadeva according to others. Vaishvadeva being what the Grihastas do. Uh, 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 according to others, it follows the Vaishvadeva. Um, uh, usually you would say the puja precedes the Vaishvadeva because we, you, we take the food from the Vaishvadeva and we offer it to other devatas. If Puja is not possible three, thrice a day. It is to be done elaborately in the morning, uh, which, is which is a suitable time for rites related to the gods. And in short, for, from, uh, for, from at form at noon, when a short form at noon and in the evening. Occasionally, pujas are also completed, usually before noon. So... Okay, so now we have authorization to perform puja. Puja, with the recitation of mantras from the Vedic literatures, can only be performed by male members of the three upper castes, Brahmins, Chatriyas, and Vaishyas, whose Upanayanam, uh, initiation into the Gayatri Mantra, has taken place and who are thereby in, entitled to recite the Veda. Women and uh, conglomeration of the lower castes, known as Shudras, uh, who do not have the right or adhikara to recite the Veda may perform puja accompanied by the recitation of Sanskrit mantras from the Puranic literature, that is, the so-called Puranic mantras, which are comparatively easy to pronounce by the, the Namaskara mantra, salutation to the deity, and so on and so on. Uh, or 
uh, silently without use of mantras. But these persons may employ a Brahmin priest um, in Marathi, this is called a Pujari, uh, often called Guruji or Bhatji in Maharashtra or Panditji in Northern India to recite the mantras on their behalf and direct the ritual. According to some authorities, women and Shudras are not allowed to touch the, the deities of uh, Shiva, Vishnu, or the Shalagram during the puja. According to common practice, not every individual performs his own puja as a, the declaration formula, sankalpa, or vow, right, which is to be uttered by the devotee at the beginning of the puja, includes wishes for the well-being of the whole family. Usually the most senior or most important member of a joint family, that is a family living together in one place, performs puja while uh, other family members afterwards uh, only bow down and offer flowers. Thus, according to some authorities, puja is like Vaishvadeva, a, a rite or ritual to be performed in a in a family taking taken collectively and not only a personal right like Sanjya and Brahma Yagya. Brahma Yagya is the recitation of the sections of the Vedas that a person is studying. According to others, puja has to be performed separately by everyone. On special occasions, that is for occasional pujas, husband and wife worship together. This means that the husband carries out the ritual as directed by the officiating priest who has been invited to preside over the ritual. While the wife touches her husband's right arm, at some uh, important stages of the sankalpa of the ritual to have her share in the performance and the merit obtained by from it the absence of his wife in the absence of his wife husband may substitute her by tying an areca nut to his waist occasionally his uh, a wife whose husband is absent may substitute him by putting uh may substitute him by putting his garment over her shoulders or placing a coconut of, uh, at her side. When an invited priest presides over the ritual and the important formulas in the puja, like the sun copper, are uttered by the, by the priest first and are then repeated by the worshiper. The main mantras are recited by the priest while the devotee offers the services according to his directions. Through the presence of a, the Brahmin priest, the ritual becomes sacred. Uh, by the presentation of a gift, dakshina, the uh, remnant of the fire of the sacrificial ritual to the priest, the devotee accumulates merit for himself. Formerly, every uh, family had its own priest who was regularly invited. The worship in temples is usually carried out by a, a professional priest who is especially uh, employed for this work or by several priests. Sodasha Upachara, or the offering of 16 services, right, uh, can be performed in temples by individuals under the supervision of such priests after paying a fixed amount of money. Preparations for puja. Precondition for the performance of puja is that the devotee has been fasting, that is, not uh, has not eaten before the deity, However, the consumption of fruits, betel, and modern milk tea is permitted. The devotee takes a bath, which is an important means of outer purification, while inner purification is achieved by achamana, sipping of water with mantras. He then puts on clean garments. There are many rules concerning the material and quality of these garments. They should be reserved for ritual use and are not to be worn outside on the road. The men... Uh, for men, the joints, uh, the texts enjoin one lower garment and one upper garment. The lower garment, called a dhoti, in Marathi, Hindi and Marathi, dotar, and the upper garment, uh, usually a shawl or a cover, prav, pravarna, pravar, pravarana, uh, pravarana, are unstitched pieces of cloth in keeping with the old Indian style of clothing. The missing upper garment may be substituted by wearing an additional sacred thread, upavita. Mm, and down here we have some things about this. So the, the, the idea underlying this custom is probably that the garment should be uncut, complete, and whole. 
In case of modern tailored clothes, cut pieces are sewn together by using an iron needle, which is destructive of power. So there's a prejudice against wearing tailored clothes. So the garments uh, worn at the time of puja have to be ritually pure. Such purity is guaranteed by clean garments made of cotton, wool, or silk, Sanskrit pitambara, corresponding to the, Ma the, the Marathi uh, sol sovle. Uh, cotton garments have to be washed by oneself or by a Brahmin each time they have been worn, whereas silken or woolen garments, which cannot be washed every day, may have uh, used may have may may have been used several times maybe used several times their purity is lost when food is eaten or water is drunk while wearing them a soul a person uh, is sovle in sovle or um, in in tamil it's the word for pure is is muddy uh, is not allowed to be touched by others as his purity will be lost the color of the garments is preferably white. Garments dyed blue with indigo being forbidden. The lower garment is worn by tucking up a particular number of folds or kacha or kaksha uh, from the border of the garment into the waistband. Wearing one's lower garment is uh, in, 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 in any other than this fashion, vikacha or akacha, having no kacha, Right or with loose folds is as good as being naked. So for women, the sakacha fashion of wearing a nine-yard long sari in Marathi, in uh, Marathi that's called a sardi, sardi, is prescribed in Maharashtra, which is passed between the legs and tucked up behind at the waist. This covering of the body, is th thus covering the body completely. This uh, differs from the vikacha um, fashion without kacha, where the garment is wrapped around the legs without tucking up any portion of it. Women should wear the nose ring in Marathi nat uh, during the puja, which is regarded as a sign of good fortune of a woman whose husband is still living. So bhagya. Okay. The wearing of garments has a protective form function. A pure garment may transfer power to him who wears it, while an impure one makes the devotee himself impure and unfit for worship. In It is further uh, essential that the devotee has trust or shraddha, faith, uh, that the rite will be effective and that his wishes will be fulfilled. If such an attitude is absent from the performance of the rite, uh, the rite will bear no fruit. And this is taken from Bhagavad Gita 17.28. Whatever offering is made in unbelief, whatever given, whatever act of penance is undertaken, whatever done of that is said, asat, it is not, for naught it is in this world or in the next. The place of worship is to be purified by cleaning the ground. In houses of the old type, this is done by applying cow dung, believed to be purifying, diluted with water as a form of plaster. Uh, with white powder, designs in Marathi, in, 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 in Marathi it says uh, Ranguli, in Sanskrit Rangavali, Ranga, Rangavali uh, are prepared on the ground. There are, is a great variety of such designs which may consist of auspicious symbols like the swastika or be merely ornamental. Next, the worshipper's seat, asana, is prepared in such a way that the devotee faces the auspicious directions of east or north. In Maharashtra, the worshipper's seat usually consists of a low wooden plank. In Marathi, uh, in Marathi part, uh, see the illustration U, which may be covered with a woolen rug or mat of darba grass. Uh, in the text, the material used for the seat and its uh, effect on the worshiper are widely discussed. Although a wooden seat is not recommended, it is now widely used for sake of convenience, uh, as it is the same seat which is occupied while taking meals. In no case should the devotee be in direct contact with the bare ground for the sacred power which he um, he accumulate he accumulated of the sacred power which he is accumulated would flow away. The worshipper needs a firm foundation to be able to balance powers and to prevent the occurrence of abnormal situations. 
Likewise, the idols and the puja utensils are never to be placed on the bare ground. The domestic worship, in domestic worship, they're usually arranged on a low square table in, Mar in, Mar 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 uh, in Marathi uh, Choranga. See illustration K. When food is offered, the plate is set on a square drawn with water on the ground, which serves as a seat. Uh, when an Araka nut substitutes Ganapati or another deity, some unbroken grains akshata serve as its seat. Grains can further be arranged in a dish in the form of a lotus with eight petals, Astadala Padma, see illustration 36, which is a symbol of, for all directions or in the form of a mandala, like the Sarvatovadra mandala, uh, and there's a sub footnote about that, or like the different kinds of mandalas, like Lingatovadras, um, which are drawn with colored powders and arranged in naturally natural colored grains. Objects which have had direct contact with divine power, like the arti, lamp after the arti rite of the puja cannot be placed on the bare ground after completing these preparations the worshiper sits down on his seat ties his top knot shika if he be a traditional male and makes a mark tilaka udva pundra with kumkum gobichanan etc on his forehead after according to the his caste and sect after performing achamana for inner purification he gets up to bow to, to uh, elder people, this is elder persons of the family to obtain their permissions for performing puja and their blessings. Then the puja begins, which is detailed, which is described in detail on pages 104. Om Namo Narayanaya. 